We continue now with our conversation of black women and God talk. And we now will look at uh, womanist theology, specifically um, looking at some of the material from the Dolores Williams text, which you all should have read by now. Uh, just, just as a backdrop, if you've looked at the uh, PowerPoint that I posted yesterday in terms of how black women are doing things, uh, we now look into the aspect of womanist theology. Uh, what I'm going to do is just to begin our conversation with the notion of womanist. Then um, this comes from Alice Walker's um, In Search of Our Mother's Garden. Uh, this, this is the first definition that she has of of womanness, of what a womanist is. Um, so I'm just not going to read it. I'm just going to leave it up here for a minute and let you all take a look at it. And of course, you can always go back and look at it again. But uh, this is the first definition. As you know, in, in most, def, uh, most dictionaries, the first definition is primarily the most important definition. And here we have the second definition of womanness from Alice Walker. And it's in, for, for me, at least, and you all may have your different ideas of it, but for, for me, at least, the, um, the probably the most important aspect of this is committed to survival and wholeness of an entire people, male and female. Not a separatist, except periodically for health. Uh, this this notion that, that black women, uh, though, oh, excuse me, I should say a womanist, though black women may be looked at as the muse of the world, a womanist is always looking out for the total well-being of the entire community. And from time to time, she must take, take a break and, and back up from, from this aspect in terms of health. Our third definition of woman is our Alice Walker's definition of woman loves music, loves dance, loves the moon, loves the spirit, loves love and food and roundness, loves struggle, loves the folk, loves herself regardless. And the fourth and final definition from Alice Walker, uh, woman is, is to feminist as purple is to lavender. And here let me just delineate the difference between a feminist and a womanist. Now, feminist, white or black feminist, is, is the idea, the, the, the notion that um, we're going to look out for the well-being of, of all women uh, based on the history of patriarchy, based upon the history of sexism. Uh, what Alice Walker does in distinguishing womanist from feminist is that womanist uh, is is a is a deeper kind of 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 analysis from from the black woman's perspective, um, based primarily upon the history of black woman's struggle in America, based upon the history of black woman's uh, surrogacy roles in America, whether voluntary or coerced, and it delves deeper and looks at. This, the, the struggle that black women engage in when it comes to power. Now, applying womanist theory to, to theology, that is to womanist theology, uh, some, some things that we just need to take as axiomatic. And I've alluded to some of these things already in a previous PowerPoint, but first of all, black women do not equal white women. Enough said there, right? We, we, we know this. Um, the history of white women in this country um, is different than the history of black women in this country. While, while there may be some intersections between black women's struggle and white women's struggle, 
um, black women's struggle is different. Also, black women do not equal black men. Um, given the history of racism in this country, we know that both black men and black women suffer from that. Um, but black men, because they are men, are part of a patriarchal system. And black men sometimes want to um, raise up the struggle for blackness over the struggle for black women. Uh, we, we have we have seen some of some of that in most recently, you know, in the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, a lot of a lot of black males have been killed and harmed as a result of systemic racism, but also a lot of black women have been killed or harmed because of the combined systemic racism and sexism that is particularly aimed at black women. So, although again there are some intersections, some overlapping of black women's struggle with uh, black men's struggle, black women do not equal black men. Um, and the way that black women talk about God is different than the way that white women talk about God, um, especially if, we, if we're talking about uh, a certain kind of liberative theology uh, based upon womanhood. Uh, white women have certain assumptions um, out based on their whiteness that black women just cannot, cannot assume. Um, and as a result of that, the way that black women talk about God is different than the way that uh, white women talk about God. Along the same lines, the way that black women talk about God is different than the way that black men talk about God. Um, and this is one of the critiques that Dolores Williams have, has of, of people like James Cone and his brother Cecil Cone and of J. Dildis Roberts and other black male theologians. The presumptive ideology behind them is is maleness. Although James Cone has come a long way since the publication of his first book, um, Dolores Williams does critique black male theologians because um, although they, they, they speak in terms of the black struggle, they, they, they have a hard time getting beyond their maleness, the, the fact that they are men talking about God. And sometimes this male God talk um, relegates black women to to a, a, a surrogacy role, to, to a role of, of not being as important as black men. And along these same lines, you know, womanist theology and, and the hermeneutical suspicion, for those of you who have had me for um, intro to systematics, um, a, hermen a hermeneutic is, is merely a way of interpretation. How do you, when you read a text, what, what are you bringing to the text that helps you to understand the text for yourself? And all of us individually um, bring our own hermeneutic to the text. And as a community of faith, we bring a certain hermeneutic to the text, a certain way of interpreting the text. Uh, with womanist theology, it's, it's primarily a hermeneutic of suspicion. That is, we're going to suspect or, or look closely at how this text has been interpreted by other people for us. And we're going to give cast a deep, suspicious eye toward these interpretations, especially when those interpretations relegate us as black women to certain roles. So when black women, when, when women are, are doing this womanist theology, primarily they are, they are approaching it from with this hermeneutical suspicion. Now, that is, that is not to say that other folk cannot engage in a hermeneutical suspicion, but this is especially the case with womanist theologians. Um, how, how do I interpret this text? How do I interpret this worship experience? How do I interpret the reading of this Bible um, that casts suspicion on it when it does not elevate my role as a woman to what, it, what I think it should be? So now this gets us into um, uh, Dolores Williams and her hermeneutic of identification ascertainment. Uh, one of the first things that she does is she said that whenever you're reading the Bible, particularly, but also along the same lines, when you are engaging in a, a worship experience or when you are engaging in a certain liturgical practice, uh, one of the first things you do in terms of a hermeneutic of identification and ascertainment 
is this first subjective approach. That is, when I read this text, when I am in this worship experience, when I am in this Bible study, or when I am in this prayer meeting, or when I, when I am in this choir practice, how am I personally identifying with this practice? And how do I ascertain personal, personally my role here? This is the first aspect of identification and ascertainment. What, what do I do? How does, how does this fit personally within my own um, understanding of who I am in this community of faith? And then there's the communal um, aspect of identification and ascertainment. All of us are individuals. We all, have a, all, we all have our own individual understanding of who God is in our lives. But when we bring that individual understanding to the worship service, when we bring that, that individual understanding to the reading, to a group reading of the text of the Bible, or to a, a, a group activity, be it Bible study, uh, uh, choir rehearsal, even our board meetings, how does this communal identification or this collective identification help the community along? How do I place myself within the community, knowing that there are other folk within the community who might bring their own hermeneutic to it? And how do I ascertain the role and status of this community along with my role and status within the community? So, so this is the communal aspect of identification ascertainment. Now, these two, subjective and communal, um, it, it, it's, it's, more, it's, it's like a participatory kind of activity where there's no real critique of my subjective role or no real critique of the communal role. That is, we as a community are going to engage in this Bible study. We as a community are going to engage in this uh, worship experience. We are going to do this, and I am going to be an active participant in it. But the third aspect that, that Williams bring forth is the objective criteria of identification ascertainment. This is where she, she says that we must be able to, to critique my own personal subjective identification and the communal or the collective identification. That is, we're not only saying, how do I fit in? We're also asking the important question, through our interpretation, who is being excluded? Who is being left out? And is this exclusion done purp on purpose, or is it just the tradition that we engage in? Now, when, when it comes to a womanist theology, it's really asking the question, how does this interpretation, how, how does this reading of the Bible, how does this worship service, how does this Bible study, how does this, this choir rehearsal exclude the, uh, the, the agency of black women from the experience by saying such things? Um, and the classic example is, is the, 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 the uh, the text from 1 Corinthians and, and from 1 Timothy, when, when it says that Paul says, I don't allow women to have any authority in the church. Now, that's a paraphrase, obviously, but it's the notion that women cannot be pastors. Women cannot be in authority over a man in church. Now, subjectively and communally, uh, we may read that and say this is a part of who we are as a, as a, as a, as a uh, Christian community. But objectively, we must ask the question, why is this here? Who put this here? And what does it mean for the, the community? And what does it mean for me in the community? And from the perspective of black women, this is an a very important aspect of the identification as attainment hermeneutic. You must always ask that objective question. We cannot get so caught up in the emotionalism of the worship experience. We cannot get so caught up in the feeling of reading the Bible that we don't give it critical assessment. 
that we don't give it critical don't, that we don't give it a critical eye. So, so Williams is saying this is a very important understanding of how womanist theology looks at whatever the, the thing is, be it the Bible, be it the church, the worship experience, the Bible study, the choir rehearsal, the board meeting, whatever the, the, whatever the experience is, how does this activity in certain ways include me but more importantly, in certain ways, try to exclude me. And this is what Williams is saying, that it's very important for womanist theology to, to, to take, take a look at. Um, and also the, the idea of Jesus, surrogacy, and, and ministry versus, versus atonement. Well, here, here, here Williams raises a, a, a point of how do we focus on the person of Jesus? And how... Um, the way she puts it, how, how can we better pursue uh, identification with Jesus? And here she critiques the several atonement theories of, of Jesus, be it uh, substitutionary, uh, the moral atonement theory, but it, it is all based on Jesus performing some surrogacy role. That is, Jesus is, is acting on the part of human beings. Um, to replace them for their sin. And what Williams is, said, is saying here that for, for, for not just black women, for, but for the black church, perhaps we should not focus so much on atonement, but on the ministerial vision of Jesus. That is, especially for black women, um, being a surrogate, always standing in place for somebody, always atoning for somebody else, perhaps does not work for because of the history of black women in American society. Rather, let's focus on Jesus' ministerial vision, the preaching, the healing, the, the teaching in, in synagogues, and, and saying that we're going to focus more on that because death through the cross cannot conquer that. But what we have often done, and this, and this is based on a history of theology, what we have done is to focus all of our understanding of who Jesus is on the cross. That is the death of the cross. And you know, the resurrection from that death. But what the Lord's witness says, we must nuance that and say that death cannot kill the ministry. Death cannot kill the ministerial vision of Jesus. The cross is nothing because Jesus' ministry is still going on. So as opposed to us focusing on always trying to place ourselves in the feet of at, at, in Jesus' image, say, I, I'm going to die on the cross for somebody. Let's focus on engaging in the ministry. And that helps all of us to, to deal with the issue of how, especially how black women have been treated in this country. So she, she really wants us to really focus on this, this notion of let's, let's do ministry. Let's focus on ministry and having faith enough, having assurance enough to know that death cannot conquer the ministry. And, and then she, she talks about differences between our black denominational churches and the black church. Uh, and I really like the way she uh, she nuances this also. Now, obviously, we, we all know that we got many different black denominations. We got AME, we got AMEZ, we got CME, we got Methodist, we got Baptist, Baptist we got Episcopalians, we got Catholic, uh, we got uh, Congregationalists, we got, we got Anglican, we got, we got all kinds of denominations, and, 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 and black folk are a part of all of these denominations. But what Williams says that uh, we we sometimes get so caught up in our denominational issues, uh, our the focus on our own beliefs, our own doctrines, our own creeds, that we lose sight of what the black church is. And what Williams is saying here is that the black church is bigger than our black denomination. The black churches in the black church encompasses much more than the the finite sect 
sectarian aspects of our denominational churches. The black church can include, obviously, our denominational churches, but the black church can also include other aspects of the black community, other liberative aspects of the black community, be, be it our black schools, be it our, our black culture, be it our black music, the blues, even hip hop. All of these can play an, an important role in what the black church is. So for we, the black church is this, this holistic, all-encompassing aspect and draws upon everything that black folk have experienced. Black denominational churches, primarily, they are, we are sectarian. That is, we, 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 we go into our own little shells about what it means to be AME, what it means to be AMEZ, what it means to be CME, or whatever the case may be. And, and we tend to want to say that, well, that's not the Methodist way of doing it. That's not the Baptist way of doing it. That's not, okay, what we're just saying, that, that, that don't amount to, to a thing. It's just a, a, a bunch of beans in a frying pan somewhere. But if we draw on the entire black community, the, the liberative aspects of the black community, and let's be clear, she's not romanticizing this. She, she understands that there are some, uh, some, some difficulties within our black community, but there are some liberative aspects that we all, as people of God, can draw from and use those in our practices of liberating black women, in our practice of liberating the black community. And from time to time, we may need to, as, as uh, uh, Alice Walker says, we may need to take some time off for our own mental health, for our own physical health, to make sure that when we re-engage in the struggle, that we can do so with clear minds, clear hearts, and healthy minds, hearts, and bodies. So, so Williams is she really nuances these understandings of what 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 womanist theology is. This is this is particular to her, this hermeneutic of identification and ascertainment. All right, um, enjoy this as much as you can. I hope I didn't talk too long.